Proctor is where I go and I look forward to going every year because it's where my batteries get recharged. Um, it's even when you're giving to that space, it gives so much back to you. Um, both the Haley Farm in general, you know, like it is home for so many of us, just like Highlander is a physical home for so many of us. And like the, the community of people that come together across geography, across identity, across faith practice, across like political ideologies, across generations, um, that even if you give, even if you're on program or you're volunteering or you're cleaning up or you're feeding folks or whatever, um, so much of my experience at Proctor for the last few years has been that regardless of why I was going, because I definitely thought about it just as sort of a, a, another panel to be on. Um, and then I left transformed. I left transformed, I felt like I could be in my fullest humanity of who Ashley is, both as a person who is, uh, who comes to movement as, as a person of faith, who does this work as a ministry. Um, and so I just, I feel excited about what it's gonna mean in this time of physical distance to be building that sort of social solidarity together um, and not let white supremacy or capitalism or COVID-19 keep us from it. Mm -hmm. I remember when you got there for the first time and you're like, what is this? And then I saw- <laughs> Literally in the parking lot. And I was like, you're not gone yet? <laughs> you know, you, you actually put your other stuff on hold to stay in that space. Yeah, yeah. It was so, I like, I didn't know what I was walking into. Um, and then I, then I got in it and I didn't want to let it go. <laughs> you know, it was just, proct I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, you know, I sort people sort of compare it to homecoming at Highlander. And I think that's true. Um, but I think what makes it so incredibly special is like, it's so rooted in traditions of, of worship and thinking about this work is like a continuation of praise and worship. What was your first Proctor experience like, Everett? I just remember, um, you know, they actually had CDF, a Children's Defense Fund, and the Black Student Leadership Network had an office at NC Central. And that was like one of the um, headquarters where I went to school, my alma mater, uh, founded in 1910, yes. see you, okay, all right. Yeah, you're welcome. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, that was where I was first, first introduced to, like, organizing. And people did this as a way of liberation, as a way of community, and, you know, to be connected to Black folks and Brown folks and other folks from across the country that was doing this in the early 80s and 90s, I was blown away. Um, and there was a program and there was a place for like people like me that didn't have to hide their faith and didn't have to hide their ruralness or their queerness or any of their other things of this. Um, but I was seen as sacred and as brilliant as everyone else. And I, um, so when I think about Proctor, I also think about, you know, Jan Dr. Janet Wolf when she's talking about beyond the walls. And yeah. what does that really mean for me as an organizer, where organizing to me is my ministry and my ministry has always been beyond the walls and creating homes and places where there was alleys and, and, and as well as homes and places where there's house and house music and that I've been called in and beckoned in to continue to fight and see toward liberation. So um, I can't wait for Proctor.